Uh, welcome back to Bike Vid. You can see in the back, I got the Link Seeds loaded up. Uh, some people call these the sub 24 hour. I mean, I feel like it should be called sub, I don't know, 48 hour. But yeah, I'm just going on a one night trip to Half Moon Bay, which is a beautiful ride up the coast. Um, in the Link Seed right now, I have my, uh, my Civilization rig uh, touring set up, which basically means I'm in Civilization uh, you don't need to bring tons of stuff, um, we're in the world. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Uh, the main purpose of this episode is I'm hoping to reach some folks that are maybe doing part of the Pacific Coast cycling route, particularly the section between Half Moon Bay and Santa Cruz, and maybe turn some people on to some awesome ways to get off of Highway 1, which is a beautiful highway, but uh, get off of Highway 1, maybe explore some sections that aren't in some of the, the maps, and just, you know, honestly enjoy maybe a little uh, safer, quieter, uh, and more, you know, I don't know, better trip. So let me see if I could name all of these sections that, uh, that I want to show you. Uh, you know, basically, boom, that takes you into bike paths all the way in and through Santa Cruz. So especially if Santa Cruz City is your destination, you're gonna have plenty of time on that chunk. Why not get off the highway? Okay, there are seven general uh, cutoffs, ways to get off the highway, that I encourage you to explore between Santa Cruz and Half Moon Bay. Let's kind of see these as more of a kind of choose your own adventure, kind of cut and paste. You could obviously <laughs> use them northbound or southbound. I'm going both ways, and so, you know, some of these that I'm showing you will be heading northbound, some will be heading southbound. The first cutoff would be the famous Swanton Road. It's a super common road bike loop that area cyclists do all the time. And maybe I'll just kind of tell you and show you a little bit of each of the cutoffs and then, you know, maybe mention a couple things that make it rad. Um, Swanton is rad for sure because um, you could go to Swanton Berry Farm to get a coffee and, a, and or a snack. You're going to be very tempted to get that coffee and snack in Davenport, but in actuality, you should just go to Swanton Berry Farm. It just looks like a little shack, but inside it's uh, there's tasty things to eat and coffee, and it's incredibly cheap. Um, so just go there. I mean, for the most part, um, Swanton is a pretty quiet road. It, you know, I mean, you're going to get some local traffic, but 100% of people that use Swanton Road are expecting to share that road with cyclists. Not to say you should be a rude cyclist, but like, you know, there again, this is a very, very popular route. Swanton also, um, in the Davenport area, suffered some a lot of fire damage, so... Um, recently in the last couple years and so there's been some big big changes in terms of just the feel and um, you know uh, I guess the memory of Swanton but this would be I mean if you're gonna take any cutoff Swanton would be for sure the cutoff to take 
This section of Highway 1 is famous for a southbound tailwind. I'm heading northbound and am, you know, kind of fucked, you know, but had been expecting it. So the kind of in this scenario, the kind of one of the worst stretches of the one before the next cutoff would probably be between that north end of Swanton and um, Gazos Creek. But, you know, once you do get to Gazos, I feel like it's a big, big payoff. Just a brief note on what I kind of alluded to earlier as my quote-unquote civilization rig in terms of my uh, uh, touring setup. You know, yeah, um, I could do this setup for a night, 15 days, 30 days. What I'm saying is there's amenities everywhere. You know, even just getting off on this small road, there was a little gas station there to resupply. So there's no need to overpack, in my opinion, for pretty much any aspect of the Pacific Coast. Once on Gazos Creek, you know, it's just your day's getting a lot better. Whether, you're, again, you're heading northbound or southbound, you've got a nice, nice long cutoff heading, uh, in this case, I'm heading to Half Moon Bay. Gazos connects with Cloverdale, which is beautiful as well. Uh, a little bit uh, busier maybe than uh, Gazos, but definitely no highway. Holy shit, folks, we're in Pescadero, and voila, what is this? More stuff, a convenience store, gas station, places to buy water, places to buy food, coffee shops, grocery stores, everything you need, and um, you're, you know, should be questioning why, if, you know, am I packing some kind of giant uh, pack system? Heading out of town on Stage Road, epic. Again, you know, I mean, just as I'm explaining this, I, mean, I thought I was going to have some kind of ranking system of what is a better cutoff, but, you know, Stage Road is is awesome. It's beautiful. It's kind of a double, double hump, so you, <laughs> you what? double hump. You go up a hill, you go down a hill, and you go uphill, and you go down another hill. So... Um, that's gonna, this is gonna be a nice, when you think about it in its total from Gazos Creek to, uh, Stage Road, which connects back to Highway 1, or again, vice versa, if you're going southbound, it's a big, big cutoff from Highway 1 that is 100% worth it. One of the last cutoffs heading northbound, or your first cutoff heading southbound, is... Verde to Parisma Road, um, maybe Parisma Creek, and again, if you're heading northbound, it'd be Verde to Parisma. You could see the highway in the background. We're just right off the highway. It's better. It's nicer. It's quieter. It's it's all the things um, that allows you to maybe enjoy your trip. Just a little bit better, especially, again, if you're traveling with people that you actually want to talk with while you're riding your bikes. So that was the last climb of the day. And uh, now I get to drop into, uh, drop into Half Moon Bay. Not sure what time it is. I'm guessing like three. Um, yeah, but we'll check in at the, uh, the Hiker Biker site. Half Moon Bay State Beach, their Hiker Biker is, is really great. Um, better than, better than so many. I mean, honestly, it's, Sometimes you just, I, I would feel like with a hiker biker, just expect the worst and then always be pleasantly surprised, yet overall stoked that they exist. Um, what was great about this hiker biker is there were three or four picnic tables. There was this great big tree to camp under because it gets pretty wet. Um, 
you know, this is a big stop. Half Moon Bay is a big, big stop for folks doing uh, stuff on the Pacific Coast. So the fact that they made their hiker biker so amenable to that, I just think is is really great. So kudos to Half Moon Bay State Beach. Nice folks. I was gonna do my uh, final update of the day from the tent, but you know, it's not just every uh, hiker biker that you could just uh, pop over a dune and end up at the beach. So I thought I'd do it from here. Um, there was no, there were no flat roads today. No flat roads. Because of the wind, everything was uphill. Um, even a lot of the downhills were uphill. But I feel like I knew what I was getting into uh, and tried to uh, appreciate the moment as, as much as possible. Uh, <laughs> I did actually take a spill, fairly low uh, speed spill. I got blown into basically the curb on the side of a, a, a road outside of Pescadero and uh, just kind of fell into the weeds um, there, but uh, don't worry, <laughs> I'm okay. Uh, so, you know, yeah, lots of wind, but again, you know, I think it's great practice, like mentally to ride in the wind, so there's that. I, I'm, I'm glad I made it out the door. I was hesitant when I uh, woke up this morning and uh, I'm just glad I made it out the door. It's been an awesome day. Good morning. I am I am out of here. It's about eight o'clock. I uh, I don't know. I mean, is this good? Is this bad? I I like got up like naturally around six. Had a cup of coffee in my tent, um, and then you know, kind of leisurely packed up and just found myself on the road by twelve or <laughs> on the road by eight. I did just have like a 15 minute conversation with a gentleman who basically, I was beginning to wonder if this was part of some huge either prank or modern art project of how long can you keep someone uh, in a conversation. But uh, you know, the gift of gab isn't always a gift to others, I guess. But uh, I'm gonna get a cup of coffee, another cup of coffee before I head out. You could see the weather, classic Half Moon Bay. And it at, le at least when I turn off back, uh, back uh, uh, away from the coast, the sun will come out, <laughs> I think. Uh, okay. Me again on the way back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop and take my windbreaker off um, because I've cut back onto Stage Road heading towards Pescadero. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's getting sunnier, it's warmer, and uh, it's a beautiful morning. And it's so nice not to be fighting the headwind. Uh, so, so good times, good times. So yeah, folks, I mean, I, I'm cruising all these rad cutoffs <laughs> now in, in reverse, you know? Um, I didn't do Parisma on the way home, but um, you know, they're equally rad both directions. Cloverdale, that's the name of the darn road. I couldn't remember connecting Gazos Creek to Pescadero, uh, which again, this is kind of one of the raddest cut throughs. I'm on my return trip right now. Really the only con I would say is particularly kind of with this section of Gazos, is I feel like sometimes like hot rod cars not hot rods like more like like porsches and lamborghinis <laughs> you know they're everywhere ferraris uh they kind of use this as like um, bmws they use this to like i'm gonna go fast which i personally feel like is never appropriate uh, so many cutoffs so little time literally i feel like this episode is very long when really i'm just trying to tell you the simple point of there's lots of rad cutoffs on your Pacific Coast tour between Half Moon Bay and Santa Cruz. Cement factory, short, cute, beautiful, lovely, no cars, lots of walkers, 
uh, that probably live on this road. So it's great. Do it. And it drops you into Davenport. Gotta get a little, uh, gotta look, get a little grav grav in the, uh, in the cutoffs. So this is my last uh, suggested way to get the heck off of Highway One. Uh, this is Scaroni Road, uh, which cuts through north and south. But either way, um, it connects to this farm road, which I'm pretty sure is totally legit to use. Lots of people do. But, I mean, this is it. We are now off and done with the Highway 1 to get into Santa Cruz because this is going to take us right to Wilder Ranch and the Wilder Bike Path and then the west side of Santa Cruz and either West Cliff or uh, the new bike path that goes through town. So we're done. We're done with the highway uh, and we get to cruise through these uh, awesome fields. All right, folks, uh, I'm just around the corner from my house. I picked up a coffee here, one of my favorite local coffee establishments. Uh, okay, fine, Cat and Cloud. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully I don't crash because I got a coffee in one hand and a GoPro in the other. Um, it is a little windy. I should wrap this up. So yeah, gonna get home. I am a big fan of Vicki Spring's book, Cycling the Pacific Coast, aka the book or the purple book. Shout out Tim Mooney and the Pedal Shift Project podcast. But I've never actually seen the adventure cycling maps of the Pacific Coast. I'm like pretty much like 99% confident that they don't include these cutoffs. They might include Swanton, just because, again, it maybe is a little more famous. But, you know, again, to reiterate, like, I'm just hoping that if you happen to be watching this and you happen to be thinking about a tour or doing your next tour, that you'd really consider to, you know, use some of these, even if it does extend your day a little bit. I think it's going to, I think it's really going to be, be worth it. Subscribe and like